Yo ya le dije, solo vale como guatas, chajas, chico, buen guatas, puto y pospío. No, te decía ya, yo, ne, ya solo más pospío, vale. La Guajira. This peninsula on the Caribbean Sea is one of the most inhospitable regions of Colombia. Living here demands adaptation to the rules of nature. Todo ha cambiado, o sea, nos ha afectado de una manera impresionante. Vivíamos antes de, de los chivos. But these rules of nature have been ignored for decades. Nos han hecho un daño ambiental grandísimo. Aquí no llueve. Es un gobierno extractivista y la simple palabra lo dice todo. All over the world, indigenous communities and their original environments are being threatened by the interests of Western economic systems. Indigenous communities are intimately familiar with their lands. The complex production systems they have developed over the centuries work also to preserve the land's natural resources. Instead of recognizing the potential of these systems, in many places, industrial business is working in growing conflict. Aquí, este Cerrejón ha desplazado muchas comunidades indígenas. Can we really continue to allow a violation of human rights and the destruction of cultural diversity? Will the Wayu people survive in La Guajira with their culture intact? In search of unclaimed land, the Wayu came from the Antilles in 150 BC and settled in what is now the border region between Colombia and Venezuela. Their mythological origin lies in their creator Malewa, who divided the community into castes or clans. With a growing population of 380,000, the Wayu represent the largest indigenous community in Colombia. Even today, their activities and social structure are shaped by their traditional beliefs, especially in the rural communities. The so-called rancherias extend over the entire province, or departamento. Starting in the humid, rather tropical southwest region, the traditional lands of the Wayu become increasingly dry further north. A semi-arid climate characterizes the central region in the peninsula. There, near the coast, lies the rancheria y Xochichon, belonging to the clan Uliana Epiayu. About 28 families live there. Maria Luisa is one of the clan's matriarchs and their leader, filling a role traditionally held by men. Nevertheless, her case is not atypical. As the clan's leader, Maria Luisa feels responsible for the well-being of the people in her rancheria, a duty weighed down by worry about the future. In 2007, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change predicted that climate change would cause extreme weather events in northern Colombia. In 2012, just five years later, the region was hit with a severe drought. The primary culprit? El Niño. Bringing unusual ocean currents every four to five years, this natural phenomenon causes unpredictable weather patterns in many parts of Latin America. These patterns are becoming increasingly extreme. With the help of international humanitarian aid, a solar-powered desalination plant was built near Manaure in 2016. Reality has set in, however. Maintenance work has become too expensive for the regional governments and neglect has rendered the plant inoperable. As a result of the current changes, the Institute of Hydrology, Meteorology and Environmental Studies of Colombia has predicted that by the end of the century, the average temperature in La Guajira will have increased by another 2.5 degrees Celsius and precipitation will have been reduced by 20%. This will result in progressive desertification. As in many parts of the world, most affected by these consequences 
will be those whose lives depend upon the sensitive ecosystems of the natural environment. Maria Luisa's family is just one of many in the region forced to reorient themselves in reaction to the changes in climate. While many chose to relocate, Maria Luisa's father instead chose to capitalize on living close to the coast. Fishing has been the livelihood of the Waiyu since their origin, but even in this line of work, they face new challenges. Due to the rising water temperatures, fish no longer gather near the shore as they once did. This has forced the fishermen to start traveling farther out each night to bring in a good catch. But storms have also begun to occur more frequently. And just recently, a storm killed three people in the neighboring village, among them a 16-year-old boy. As their traditional way of life grows increasingly difficult and even dangerous, the younger YU generation struggles to see the attraction. In some cases, they slip into crime. In order to guarantee access to water for the population, the government in Bogota launched the Wajira Azul project. People travel from an average of two kilometers away to get to its water stations. What? According to the United Nations Development Program, a person in La Guajira lives on 0.7 liters of water a day. In comparison, a single European person consumes 144 liters. Overall, doctors estimate that nearly 80% of YU children are malnourished. Pregnancy carries risks as well. And yet, people are grateful for every liter of water they have. But it does not come from the ground. The state pays for the delivery of water to the region in large tanks. It is a good source of income for the large transport companies. For agricultural purposes, however, this type of supply is not sufficient. Food cannot be grown and must therefore be purchased additionally, and little trust can be placed in the local government for help. <laughs> Due to mistrust in the politicians, people in many places try to come up with their own solutions. This is also the case in Maria Luisa's rancheria. <laughs> Yeah.
In Huayena Tamana, a few kilometers away, the proximity to the river seems to be a lucky draw. The Rio Rancheria is the largest river in La Guajira. It originates in the Sierra Nevada and runs to Rio Acha, the capital of La Guajira, where it empties into the Caribbean Sea, in the rainy season at least. There is no need to follow the course of the river much farther to see that the water is no longer running. Supplies become especially complicated at the end of the dry season. This footage was taken in early March. Heavier rains aren't expected for another several months. At the Jawe, typically used as a watering hole for the animals, water is already depleted. In the past, many clans bred cows, horses, and mules. Today, goats are the only animals able to be sustained. This water shortage is not only due to climate change, however. El Cerrojón, the largest open pit coal mine in Latin America and one of the largest in the world. It covers a total area of 69,000 hectares from which more than 32 million tons of coal are extracted annually. In 2013, this generated revenues of 2.3 billion US dollars, a lot of money, none of which is reaching those most affected by the mine's presence. Instead of receiving compensation, the local people are left to deal with the consequences on their own. <laughs> Ramiro Sapuana is not just referring to the coal mine. A few years ago, an underground gas pipeline was pulled through the local landscape. Several leaks posed high risks in this arid area. Even amidst the risk of underground gas leaks, however, the region's lack of water is what worries people the most. Climate change and the damage caused by industry development significantly complicates the work of the Sabedora. As a healer, she feels responsible for the health of the people. Her mother taught her everything about the healing powers of the plants that grow in their region. The search for medicinal plants has become increasingly complicated. Some have even gone extinct. Additionally, people seem to be losing interest in the traditional medicines. For many Wayu, however, their religious beliefs seem to continue to be important. The cemetery stands as a symbol of their faith. Why you women traditionally preside over the funeral organization? But it is not only in this ritual that they play an important role. Inheritance of social status and property is exclusively matrilineal. And they are also well distributed within the society. A niece, the Sabedora's niece, uses her knowledge from her studies in education and social sciences as a member of the Fundación Apunaja, among other things. 
This small NGO organizes various projects to strengthen the YU both socially and culturally. In the Rancheria Huayenetamana, the women of the surrounding rancherias were invited to a weaving workshop. The so-called tejidos are an important part of the YU culture. Ancestralmente, el tejido es una parte muy principal para una mujer guayú. Por medio del tejido, transmite esa eh, cosmovisión como tal. Es algo innato en ella. Es un saber que por medio de sus manos, como muy bien lo indica nuestro origen mitológico, la Waleker. With the traditional handicraft, mainly backpacks or hammocks, the so-called chinchorros are made. For some, this is an important side income. The workshop has a different goal in mind, however. Queremos no salirnos de lo tradicional, pero sí innovar, demostrando por medio del tejido elementos que ya no encontramos en el entorno. Aves, plantas, que fueron en su época donde nuestras mujeres mayores eran el sustento de ella. To create awareness for the YU situation, events are also organized outside of La Guajira. Networking is particularly important to Anise. This comes as no surprise. In past times of crisis, much of their aid has come from foreign NGOs. Selling the woven art at home and abroad is a way to maintain their independence. The young YU in particular have a special role to play here. Son el futuro, pero falta solamente de que ellos se concienticen de la importancia. Ser YU es es hablar el YU, es conservar tus y, y costumbres. Entonces, por medio de este taller estamos reforzando los saberes ancestrales que nuestros jóvenes conozcan. Esos frutos silvestres que eran el alimento de nuestros eh, antepasados. Not only through the workshop, but also through the school, the children and young people are taught the importance of traditional life and its connection to the needs of today. The school in Huayena Tamana, a combined primary and secondary school, received a large part of its funding from a Swiss foundation. But the teachers, some of whom teach up to six subjects, say further investment is still needed. Como ustedes pueden observar, nosotros pues en estos momentos estamos abajo de una aula, eh, podríamos decirlo tradicional, eh, que no tiene piso. Cuando llueve, eso pues entra el agua. Ahorita mismo la brisa, la tierra, el arenero. Necesitamos aulas. Necesitamos dotaciones para, para un mejor aprendizaje de los niños. These are demands for basic needs, but it is not only the inadequate equipment that causes difficulties. Aquí hay varias comunidades, varias comunidades que están muy retiradas. Hay unas comunidades que, que tiene 10 kilómetros de distancia de aquí, donde los niños eh, deben venir, salen de allá madrugados, bien temprano, 5 de la mañana están saliendo y están llegando aquí a las 8. Sometimes, students have the option to be picked up by a car. Carlos Zapuana still sees the bright side, however, knowing what the education situation is like in the rest of La Guajira. Peor todavía. Hay, hay instituciones que prácticamente los docentes deben dictarle clase a los niños abajo de los árboles. Abajo de los árboles. Education is seen by many as the most promising way out of the current predicament. Ideally, the YU children will return after university to help the most severely affected rancherias. But their culture should not be forgotten. That is why the school also teaches in Wayunaiki, the language of the YU. Carlos sees a lot of potential for students to combine their traditions with professional careers. Yo veo mucho futuro, y eso son lo que yo les imparto a ellos, pues. Les explico que la única manera para tener algo en la vida es la, la, la educación. The seeds of this perspective were sown with the opening of this school. Students, however, still have obstacles to face after they graduate. Yo digo que hay muchas falencias todavía, eh, porque ha habido jóvenes que, que, que han salido de aquí, pero no tienen la oportunidad 
o sea, eh, de entrar a una universidad porque no tienen los recursos. Two people who walked this path successfully are Anise and her husband John. John studied systems engineering. In addition to solving social issues, he focuses on finding technical solutions to water and supply problems. Y gracias a mi mamá que siempre no me dejó de fallecer porque ella fue la que siempre nos impulsaba, ¿no? Y ella hacía cosas, hacía chinchorro, vendía, hacía mochila, y cualquier cosa nos ayudaba. Y ya después nosotros empezamos a trabajar y empezamos a cambiar la, el, el panorama ya en, en la casa. Y no ha sido fácil. Many YU have moved to the city because of the precarious conditions in the countryside. However, because of the different lifestyle, the language, customs, and traditional activities of their culture are being left behind. In cities like Maikau, daily survival becomes more important than preserving traditional life. Intensified by the crisis in Venezuela, Maikau is one of the poorest and most criminal cities in all of Colombia. An important source of income for many people are the so-called mobile gas stations. Gasoline is smuggled across the border from Venezuela and costs about three times less for the end consumer than at a conventional gas station. The price per liter, 15 cents. This illegal market is tolerated, as are the harmful conditions of the work. This girl started working here at the age of 10 and her mother depends on her help. Complicated, a euphemistic term for the situation in Maikau. Besides smuggling all kinds of goods and selling drugs, bribery is a part of everyday life as well. The market of Maikau. Much of the goods for sale, such as beef, are imported illegally. But for the YU, the market provides opportunity. Their handmade goods sell quite well here. Even if the working conditions are less than ideal, it at least is something. At the slaughterhouse, located in the middle of the city, the situation is worse. It is an uncomfortable place that has become a meeting ground for drug addicts. Sad fates from which the YU are not exempt. The main drug here is basuco, an intermediate product of cocaine production. It is cheaper and also far more toxic than its final product. In La Guajira, there is a lack of resources for the essentials. This is no different with regards to waste collection. Again and again, one arrives at places where garbage has accumulated in large quantities. La Guajira's strong winds sweep the garbage throughout the region where, at last, as is often the case, it ends up in the sea. As a somewhat larger city, Maikau at least has its own landfill. Here, they attempt to dispose of the garbage in massive holes. A quick glance around reveals what the biggest problem here is. We continue out to Cabo de la Vela, right through the driest part of the departamento. 
The road itself paints an ambivalent picture. When the paved road ends, the uncertain expanse of the desert reveals itself. It seems unlikely that anyone might live here. And yet, over and over, children in particular appear, holding their hands out to the passing cars. Why here exactly? At Cabo de la Vela, tourists can visit a place whose lodging and catering establishments are exclusively in the hands of the Wayu. Two worlds that are so close to each other. La mendicidad no hace parte de nuestra cultura. Es algo nuevo que ha llegado. Ya el niño sabe que viene un carro turista y está así porque ya sabe que el turista le va a tirar algo, ya sea una bolsita de agua, una galleta, una chupeta. Entonces no tenemos ningún otro tipo de actividad. Para ellos pronto un sitio de recreación no existe acá en el Cabo La Vela. Muy triste. More than 20 years ago, Jennifer's parents started renting out their spare room. After that, things developed on their own. She is happy that her family found a way to cope with the difficult situation. Estamos muy mal de agua. Uno como restaurante de hospedaje tiene la opción de ir, no, mira, necesito agua, tráeme un carro tanque de agua, pues uno tiene para pagarlo. Muy costoso, sí, uno es consciente de esa situación. Pero dejamos de trabajar si no lo hacemos. How guests are to be responsible with their energy and water consumption is clarified upon arrival. En su casa uno constantemente está lavando, está bañando, cheque ducha aquí, ducha allá. Acá no, acá se controla todo. Manejamos simplemente el horario de 6 a 10 de la noche. The tourism sector, exclusively organized by the YU, has brought new opportunities to many people in Cabo de la Vela. The sale of tejidos is also well received by tourists. Here, too, the weaving craft is considered one of the last surviving traditional activities of the YU. Meanwhile, climate change continues to leave its mark. Todo, todo ha cambiado. Se nos ha afectado de una manera impresionante. Vivíamos antes de, de los chivos. Tengo una tía que ya sufre mucho, lo vivo en carne propia. Ya me dice, no tengo agua. Y, y duele, pero toca decirte, no, ya no tengas más animales. Porque tú sufres más por tus animales que por Dios mío, porque dejas de buscar agua para ti, para darle a tus animales. Pero ella también nos expresa que esa es su manera de, de sustentar a su familia, y es la realidad. Pero sí, el cambio climático ha afectado muchísimo. Eso nos ha hecho forzosamente perder muchas costumbres que teníamos. Official government documents discuss engaging sustainable tourism as a partial solution to the situation in La Guajira. To achieve this, however, strict regulations would need to mitigate the industry's environmental footprint. Tourism's heavy use of resources can quickly become a problem when left unchecked. This opportunity is also not only meant for individuals. La idea es que las cercanas también se beneficiaran. A good path, but not everyone is fortunate enough to walk it. Moreover, depending on tourism is risky business. The industry is a fragile one something experienced not only during the COVID-19 pandemic. The work at the Manaure Salinas, on the other hand, is considered crisis-proof. Almost all the workers in the largest salt extraction plant in Colombia, where around 60% of the state's salt production takes place, are YU. And they are following tradition. Salt has been extracted by the YU since before the Spaniards took over, but repeated disputes as to who owns the rights to desalination work have existed for centuries, beginning with the Spaniards' initial arrival in La Guajira all the way up until 2004. In 2004, the company Salinas Maritimas de Manaure was finally founded, comprising both the government and the indigenous community. Here, the YU benefit from most of the revenue. The negative impact on the environment is also nowhere near as high as in other industries. 
Nevertheless, there is a limitation on the number of job positions available. In Baja Wahira, the view begins to change. Since the south is situated somewhat higher and is directly connected to the Sierra Nevada, the climate also changes. Due to increased precipitation and high humidity, rice can even be grown in many places. The staple food of many Colombians certainly needs sufficient water for cultivation. John's family at the Rancheria Paraíso in Baja Wahira grows rice as one of their crops. His siblings help their aging mother with the work at hand. She herself has spent her entire life here. On the farm, Fortuna, they cultivate a variety of vegetables and fruits for their own use, in addition to the rice. The family also owns several animals for their subsistence. She has already taught her grandchildren how to cook the traditional arepas. In Baja Wahira, life is more akin to the traditional ways of the Wayu. For the irrigation of the fields, the family has built a small canal that flows from the nearby Rio Rancheria to their farm. Here, the river still provides a clean and sufficient water supply. The circumstance changes not all too far away, however, revealing the challenges of life in Baja Wahira. It is not only poverty from which large parts of the population suffer, but also the noticeably more frequent health problems. This is due to the polluted water in the streams of the Rio Rancharia. The source of the issue can already be guessed. In the southeast of La Guajira lies El Cerrajón open pit mine. Since the mid-1980s, El Cerrajón has mined coal and transported it northward by train in about 100 open freight cars. Each car carries up to 100 tons of coal. By the time the train reaches its coastal destination, 150 kilometers away, the wagons have inevitably lost some of their environmentally harmful load. The coal then gets loaded into container ships, by which the majority of Colombia's coal exports is delivered to countries such as the USA, Turkey, Spain, the Netherlands, and Germany, most of whom are countries who consider themselves pioneers when it comes to human rights and the fight against climate change. In Germany, a new coal-fired power plant was commissioned just last year. While the former Eon subsidiary Uniper operates the power plant, Energy suppliers such as RWE and even Deutsche Bahn are its major customers. Yet the railroad group, one of Germany's largest companies, launched an image campaign in 2019 highlighting how sustainable they are. This greenwashing is not only practiced in the consumer countries. Antes de ser una empresa estatal, antes era en carbones de Colombia, Carbocol, Luego pasó a Carbones del Terrejón, de una compañía privada, extranjero. Anglo-American from Great Britain, BHP Billiton from Australia, and Glencore from Switzerland. Each of these commodity groups share a third of the profits from the Cerrojón coal mine. The majority of the yearly revenue, therefore, goes abroad. Although a portion of the profits remain in Colombia through taxes, a reform in 2008 chose to centralize much of the income, leaving the region of La Guajira twice robbed. Until 2008, the fiscal revenues from the Cerrajón's profits were invested in various programs that benefited the people of La Guajira. University studies were free, and the departamento also provided food at the schools. Son muchas las necesidades que, que en el departamento que no fueron satisfechas. Teniendo la oportunidad, haber tenido la oportunidad de poder superar todas estas necesidades con el recurso de la regalía. Interestingly, a section on sustainable development can be found on the website of the self-declared Responsible Mining Company. There, it also states that they are committed to the well-being of the people of La Guajira. Aunque ellos se dan la propaganda a nivel nacional, a nivel internacional, de que ellos eh, vinculan al 
profesional guayú, pero es muy difícil que entre ahí. De aquí con la necesidad que hay en las comunidades, en las personas, cualquiera que le den una oportunidad, trabajaría porque, o sea, la cuestión aquí es de sobrevivir. Se favorece siempre a los caciques políticos, a los senadores. Puede haber mucho control, pero aquí hay corrupción. This presents grim conditions for any kind of legal action against the giant mine. Here in Provincial, a kind of protected area for indigenous communities, people are even more directly affected by the impact of the coal mining. Nosotros vivimos 24 horas sobre el ruido de las máquinas que están a 600 metros de la comunidad. Lo que hoy día es el tajo era lo que era para nosotros pues el bosque de las plantas tradicionales nativas que servían para las prácticas tradicionales del Oxu o del Sabedor. Si hablamos de otro impacto, hablamos del impacto del residuo tóxico que recibimos diariamente. Y además de eso, pues en vez de tener un progreso, lo que tenemos es más pobreza. A contradicción que will have far reaching consequences in the future. El día que ellos se vayan, solo nos va a quedar los socavones, la tierra dañada y una proliferación de enfermedades que ni siquiera las entidades de salud van a poder atender en su momento porque no van a tener cómo. That is why El Cerrojón promises to facilitate access to clean water for the most affected communities. John sees things differently. In Provincial, the Rio Rancheria flows directly through the mine. In the last few meters before flowing into the plant, fauna and flora only seem to be intact. Antes allá había pesca. En esa parte del río allá había pesca, ya no hay, y eso ha desaparecido. Cerró un cesta agua para su actividad de en explotación, para mojar eh, las carreteras, para mojar el carbón cuando lo están triturando, y aquí cambia, y aquí empieza la contaminación del río, total. Two years ago, María Cristina was invited to join the Forum for Indigenous Peoples and Human Rights of the United Nations in order to help address the problems of indigenous communities. A pesar de que están los filipinos, están los de Malasia, están los de Guatemala, están los de Canadá, los daños estructurales del territorio son similares, a pesar de las diferencias geográficas precisamente por el modelo económico extractivista. In total, El Cerrojón consumes 17 million liters of water a day for its operations, an absurdly high amount compared to what the local people have at their disposal. But this is not only about water disputes. Aquí este Cerrojón ha desplazado muchas comunidades indígenas. No tenemos eh, fuentes de, de cómo producir nuestro propio alimento porque los terrenos fértiles eh, han sido usados por parte de Cerrejo. Todavía en este año 2020 podemos estar hablando de una recolonización de los pueblos indígenas. Quieren nuestras riquezas, pero tampoco nos dan garantías de poder subsanar o mitigar un poco el tema de la violencia sistemática que se vive en el pueblo indígena. To minimize the resistance to resettlement, the affected communities are promised land elsewhere. That the new living conditions are often worse than before is noticed only too late, and resistance to relocation comes with a cost. Hay muchas amenazas contra lo, los líderes y lideresas que han intentado este, defender el territorio. Hay mucho temor. In 2020 alone, more than 300 activists were murdered in Colombia. Threats that also affected Maria Cristina. Desde muy niña nosotros hemos vivido secuestros, mi papá lo mataron los paramilitares y en el año 2013 Yo llegaba de Armenia, de la Universidad del Quindío, a una, de una conferencia precisamente del río Ranchería y llegando a mi casa estaban siete hombres, pues, encapuchados, armados. Llegaron en la noche, en la casa no había nadie, yo traté como de, de por lo menos, disimular que no había nadie en la vivienda. Y me tocó amanecer, pues, ahí parada hasta las cinco de la mañana que vi la luz. Yo alcancé a ver los hombres y llamaban mi nombre. Entonces, eso 
para nosotros fue muy duro, sobre todo para mi familia, y empezamos como a revivir todas esas experiencias de conflicto que ya habíamos vivido mucho antes. Hay una desestabilización emocional cada vez que yo salgo, que llego, cada vez que pasa algo. Hoy día me duele mucho. Another societal issue makes the situation even more challenging. Yo diría que para todas las mujeres es mucho más complejo. Se habla muy bonito en la letra, en los discursos del empoderamiento de la mujer, pero que realmente aún las mujeres somos muy estigmatizadas. Somos violentadas con mucha más facilidad. And in spite of it all, María Cristina wishes to continue to advocate for women and the indigenous community. ¿Qué pasaría si todos los líderes sociales nos quedáramos callados? Cries for the water that has been taken from them while being artificially collected elsewhere. The El Cercado Dam, a glaring symbol of the situation in La Guajira. Where just next door, people are fighting to survive as they run out of water, here, 198 million cubic meters of water are being dammed on 600 hectares. This has the potential to supply nine municipalities with water, including Manaure and Maicao. The first phase of construction began in 2001 and was finished in 2010. Since then, only a fraction of what flowed before is now allowed to pass through. Eh, no han cumplido con sus palabras de terminar la segunda fase, que son la puesta en marcha de los acueductos, la implementación de las áreas para el riego para las 18.000 hectáreas y la puesta en marcha de la microcentral generadora de energía. As a rice farmer, José Ramón Peláez represents the interests of the agricultural development in La Guajira. Although not a YU, he exchanges regularly with the representatives of the indigenous community as they have overlapping interests regarding the water supply. As he sees it, the Bogota central government is to blame for the inadequate planning that is putting livelihoods at risk. Pero nosotros también somos unos grandes aportantes al Producto Interno Bruto. Entonces, a esa deuda social es que tiene que apuntarle el gobierno nacional para que puedan mejorar las universidades, los hospitales, las vías. Y sin eso no hay desarrollo. Ahora vienen las energías renovables, energías limpias, pero a la Guajira no la tienen en cuenta. But the promising future of renewable energy production offers many opportunities, including in the realm of water provision. Desalination plants, for example, could be operated in more economically and ecologically sustainable ways. Vemos tantos proyectos que hay con el tema del agua y tenemos un tesoro aquí enfrente que es el, el agua salada, el mar. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has already conducted some pilot projects, like the construction of wells or the installation of solar panels at some of the rancherías. However, there is often a lack of funds for the maintenance of these structures, and the money that is supposed to be set aside for it keeps disappearing in the system. Es que el problema en la Guajira no es de agua. La despensa de agua más grande del mundo, yo creo que la tiene la Sierra Nevada, y nosotros hacemos parte importante de esa despensa. Creemos en las oportunidades, pero el gobierno tiene que asumir su responsabilidad, que hasta ahora no la ha tenido. Instead, the population is impoverished and environmental damage grows. Ese daño ambiental que hoy tenemos que nos hace la explotación del cerrejón. Por eso nosotros exigimos compensación con el, de, con la, con el departamento, porque a nosotros nos han hecho un daño ambiental grandísimo. Aquí no llueve. Nuestros ganados se han venido muriendo año tras año porque las posibilidades de agua se han disminuido en un 50%. The dam is supposed to be able to catch enough water in the rainy season for there to be an adequate supply left over for the dry season. But instead what remains is a huge intrusion into nature which in turn eats up money through mere maintenance costs and it worsens the situation for the people of La Guajira. For the YU, the loss of their common identity is at stake. Si no hay agua no hay nada de eso. As biodiversity is lost, so is humanity's cultural wealth. The lack of water expedites this loss, although access to it should be a fundamental human right. 
Demands from modern societies and individual interests are presenting not only the YU with a fierce challenge. Supone que el gobierno es quien tiene que garantizarnos el derecho a la tierra y el derecho a la vida. El desierto cada día va creciendo más. Lo que necesitamos es voluntad política. Sustainable economic frameworks, as envisaged in tourism and agriculture, are steps in the right direction. But the global trend of moving away from coal in favor of renewable energy supply should continue to go a step farther, all the while bearing the local people in mind when it comes to the matter of work opportunities. The contribution to global warming, from which La Guajira is particularly affected, would also be much lower. We have a compromise with our future generations, with our children, with our children. There is still something left of life. With today's improved networking, numerous small social and political movements, and the growing access indigenous communities have to the political realm, an inkling of optimism is emerging. There is hope. Our culture lives. But above all, there is hope, because despite the challenges, people are committing their lives to ensuring that the population is treated and cared for fairly. Una escopeta, una pistola, no es una defensa. Equally important is for the whole world to realize where our path has led us thus far. Today's affluent society has caused a lot of suffering in many parts of the world. Conflicts over water and land represent only a part of how people and nature are being harmed, which we further through our own continued consumption. The increasing amount of water used for the production of consumer goods such as meat and textiles, but also energy, is no longer in proportion to what is being lost. This also includes ancestral knowledge, which has much to teach us, especially now. In climate research, indigenous communities are being increasingly included given their intimate knowledge of the lands. A growing body of people are choosing alternative and natural healing methods. What we can probably learn most from this ancient wisdom, however, is how to best adapt to the conditions of our environment and learn to treat it with respect and humility. Yo le pediría al Estado colombiano que se nos respeten y ser aliados a la madre naturaleza. It should have been clear long ago that regional conflicts are also the responsibility of the rest of the globe, not only when it comes to water. More efficient technologies may be a solution to the current manifestation of the issues, but without recognizing the need to sacrifice some of our society's indulgent habits, the world runs the risk of facing even greater problems, and soon.